Hey everybody, welcome back to section 1.3 and now we're going to be talking about concavity. In a light way? No, no, no. We're talking about it for serious. So, here's the idea. We're about to get into some real world applications and talk about turtle racing and all sorts of other great stuff that you probably remember from a previous section 1.3 video. But before we do that, let's talk about abstract shapes of functions. So, let's take a handy dandy little guy you may remember from such math classes as everything ever. Here's a parabola, and the equation for that sucker is y equals x squared. And this is an example of a function that is concave up. So we're going to be tossing around this idea of functions that are either concave up or concave down. And the basic idea for a function that's concave up is that it's got a sort of scoopy shape to it. Scoopy, 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 scoopy. So, for example, this has the property that if you were to take a whole bunch of water and then pour it in, water, you can tell it's water because it's blue, then it would hold water. And an example of something that's concave down, well, the easiest example is to take the exact same graph, flip it upside down, and draw that. So if you've got something that looks like this, this is concave down. Now right now, these are just shapes of functions, and you probably have zero idea why we would give a crap about any of this. But I promise you, it's about to become all real in a bit. So let's do an example of where a function might be concave up or concave down before we even bother with the real world thing. So you could see a function that has a more complicated shape. Maybe it looks something like this. And this function is going to be concave up in some places and concave down in other places. So we'll do a thing that we did before where we're going to draw some things in colors and we're going to use blue to mean concave up. And we're going to use red to mean concave down. Now this can be tricky for people sometimes, but the idea is uh, we want to find the parts of the graph that look like they're scoopy up the same way that this sucker right here is scoopy up. And if you look at this guy for long enough, it's pretty obvious that you've got some scoopy up behavior right around here, and you've got some scoopy up behavior right around here. And kind of similarly, we've got some scoopy down behavior right around here, and some scoopy down behavior right around here. The thing that's not obvious is where it goes from being scoopy up to scoopy down. So um, here's the idea. The places where it goes from being scoopy up to scoopy down are places where the line of the curve that we're drawing is almost completely flat. So for example, let's go back up to this guy here, the parabola y equals x squared. There's really no place where that line is completely flat. But on the other hand, if we draw something like that, then right around here, that's the point where the line is almost completely flat. If you zoom way in, then that part looks like a straight line more so than the rest of it does. The rest of it looks like it's always kind of curved up or it's curved down. But that one point that we zoomed in on looks more flat. And so that's kind of what we want to think about here. Now, when you're asked to identify this stuff on homework, you know, we're not going to be super picky about it. So if, it's, if your point's a little bit off from our point, no one really cares. As long as you have the right idea, that's what matters. And so here, I'll tell you what I would think. I think that this first part stops being scoopy up right around here. And it also stops being scoopy up right around here. I think I do that first one pretty well. Let's extend the x-axis so we can actually talk about going all the way over to the right-hand side. Um, over here, I think the scoopy up part keeps going all the way. And here, I think it's scoopy up even until about right there. I think the concave up portions of this graph, which I'm drawn in blue, are pretty much what I've just drawn. So if we color the x-axis too, it's going to be like that and like that. I think those blue regions are the concave up ones. And similarly, I think everything else is going to be the concave down. So, well, you know, let me change my mind. I think this blue one here goes till about there. I don't know why I lied before. Apparently I'm a big fat liar. But, yeah, I think that looks better. All right, I'm happy with that. And so I think that the concave down regions are pretty much everything else. 
concave down there, concave down there, concave down there. And we can shade in the x-axis just to illustrate what those regions are. Blue to blue to blue to blue to blue. Woo, I'm so red. Look at me, red, red, red. All right. And so if we had fancy schmancy little labels on these guys, maybe this was like, you know, this is obviously x equals 0. And maybe this is x equals 10. And this is x equals 14. This is x equals 19. This is x equals 26. Then if some dude was like, excuse me, where is the function concave up and where is it concave down? Then um, obviously the thing we would do is call the police, but if we decided to answer him, we would answer him like this. Oh my gosh, I can't spell concave. Concave up. So this sucker's gonna be concave up, just like with increasing or decreasing, we're going to give the answer for concave up in terms of x values. So we're going to say it's concave up from x equals 10 to x equals 14. It's also concave up from x equals 19 to x equals 26. And then, of course, it's concave down instead on the red intervals. So it's concave down from 0 to 10, and it's concave down from 14 to 19. So hopefully that makes sense. If it's sort of scoopy up like it is here and here, then that's concave up. If it's scoopy down like it is there or there, then that's concave down. And you shouldn't confuse that with increasing or decreasing. Notice that right here, the function is increasing. Its y values are getting bigger, but it's still scoopy shaped down. It's more curved down than it is curved up. Um, and then the same thing here. This function even starts to decrease, but for that first little bit, even while it's decreasing, it's still concave down. So whether it's concave up or concave down is a totally different question from whether it's not it's increasing or decreasing. All right, so let's talk about some awesome real world applications. Oh, I can't spell anything today. World. There we go. And by applications, obviously, again, I mean turtle racing. So here's the thing. You may remember from our previous video, we had Pat the Turtle um, doing something like, you know, here's the finish, y equals 10. And he was going towards the finish, but then he turned around, and then he turned around again, and he got, turned around again, but there we go. He eventually made it. Hope you like the sound effects. They're pretty important in math. All right. And uh, now before, when we were doing the example of increasing or decreasing, then Pat's owner was worried about if he was actually headed towards the finish line or not. If Pat's headed in the wrong way, obviously that's a big money loser for the owner, and that's no fun to anybody. But if Pat's owner is concerned about really fine-tuning the turtle's performance, here's what he's going to worry about. He's not just going to worry about if Pat is headed in the right direction. He's going to worry about if Pat is accelerating or decelerating. So basically, you don't want a turtle who's hitting the brakes. You want a turtle who's hitting the gas pedal and going zoom. Zoom. That's the hope. So maybe Pat's owner comes to us, the mathematician people, and says, ah, here's the graph of Pat's tracks, his behavior, and I want you to figure out when he's accelerating and when he's decelerating. Well, the thing that's kind of cool about this is acceleration and deceleration is the same thing as concavity. So in this case, what we're going to say is, um, oh, wow. What we're going to say is, I need to learn how to spell, acceleration equals concave up and deceleration equals concave down. That's an important thing to remember because you're probably gonna see some homework or test problems that don't ask you about concavity, they only ask you about acceleration, but it turns out those are the exact same question. So in order to answer this, um, in fact, in particular, maybe Pat's owner says, tell me where he's accelerating. Then we scroll back up here, and because we're looking for acceleration, we're basically looking for where the function is concave up. And so we identify all parts of this guy that are scoopy shaped up. And in my opinion, I think we're scoopy shaped up right around in here. 
and then also let's see right around here uh, all the way up to the end actually and so if we mark these with little x value things like we did before maybe this is zero maybe this is x equals five this is x equals nine x equals 11, and x equals 20. I know these are probably different from last video, but don't give me a hard time. So what are we doing? What are we doing? Oh, right. So we're trying to answer where Pat's accelerating, and that's just the question of where Pat is concave up. So just like above, we're going to answer this with x values. And so we're going to say he's accelerating from the first interval is 5 to 9. And the last guy is 11 to 20. That's it. Now we get our paycheck, Pat's owner is frustrated, and turtles are never purchased as pets ever again. See you next time.